Alright hey folks, it's Andy here from Rusty the Woodsman and thanks for joining me. So today's video we're at my little work desk at the back of the living room. I've been working on a project lately, I started it before the Christmas period and I finished it a few days ago and it's this haversack here. So I thought I'd just talk about it quickly, show off some of the features of it and also I put together a little montage during the, the building process, I filmed little you know, snippets here and there, so I'll put that together as well. So the exterior of the haversack is made from cotton canvas, it's a dual tone, you've got brown there and also a sort of a dark forest green type colour. So for the closure straps we've got the, the plastic quick release clips there and a sort of coyote brown colour and also the tan nylon webbing. I've left about 80cm of excess there so if, you know, if I needed to attach anything to the underside like my tap or whatnot, then I can do. The shoulder strap is again that nylon webbing and brown and you've got the it's 50mm wide and you've got the plastic quick release clip there as well and then also this little adjustment bar thing so there's about in total I think about 2 meters of strap in there and then it can be adjusted to make it longer or shorter as needs be when I was designing the haversack I wanted it to have a couple of outside pouches two on each side big enough for one to hold my folding saw and then the other one to hold my knife just so I wasn't having to go into the you know the main section of my pack and dig around for them when I wanted to use them the other external pouch is on the front under the top flap. It's fairly sizeable. In it at the minute I've got a you know, just a folding wood stove, but I could probably get a bit more kit in there, you know, a map, some navigation kit, even a book. The internal of the haversack's lined with this orange water resistant nylon material and it's it's also ripstop. It's not so much to make it water repellent. I, I did take some inspiration from the, the Hidden Woodsman haversack. And Malcolm, he uses orange liners in his packs, etc. And as I understand it, it's to brighten the inside during, you know, sort of murky conditions. Makes it easier to identify the items inside. I thought it was a good idea, so yeah, I incorporated that into the design. Another feature I wanted the haversack to have was a sort of, you know, something to keep the water bottle upright when it was inside the pouch. So I made this sort of loop, again with this orange material. And then the water bottle just sits inside that. Also got the wooden spoon in there and the sticky fat wood. But yeah, it's just to stop the water bottle from tipping over inside the pack. The other feature that I did for this pack, and it was a sort of last minute decision to do it, but it was to put this extra sleeve on the inside, at the back here. And at the minute I've just got one of those, you know, flexible chopping boards and also a piece of birch bark. But I could probably put a, you know, a seating pad in there, a book, or again the, yeah, the the folding wood stove there. It was just a, a nice way to be able to separate some of the items to make it easier to find things. And this is it on. It feels fairly comfortable. There's there's quite a lot of kit in there, you know, so with this 50mm uh, webbing strap, it's it, it's doubled over, so I'll have to crouch down, but as it, as it goes over my shoulder, with it being doubled over, it feels really comfortable with the, the weight of the haversack bearing down. So, um, yeah, I'm in two minds at the minute whether I'm going to make one of those little padded things that go over the strap to then go over the shoulder. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty sizable pack. There's plenty of, plenty of kit in there for a, a nice day out in the woods. I can't remember the dimensions off the top of my head, but they will be in the, the beginning of the montage video where I show the, the design drawings.
So yeah folks, that was how I put the, the habitat together. Yeah, the waxing that I did at the end, that was just uh, beeswax. Um, as I understand it, it's not the best to use it on its own. You, sort of, you need to mix it with paraffin wax. Um, but I didn't have any around, all I had was the beeswax, so that's what I did it with. And it, it's, it's only the one coat as well, because I need that pack of beeswax for other stuff. But um, I will probably down the line make the proper beeswax and paraffin wax mixture and then give it a lot more coats to give it a much more better water repellency on the outside. But um, yeah, I'm happy with how it turned out. It's, yeah, the biggest sewing project that I've taken on to date so far. I do have another one that I'm planning on. It's going to be a much bigger thing. It'll be a backpack. Um, but it's still sort of in the design phase and then selecting materials that I want to make it from and then some of the materials that I've got in mind are quite expensive so I'm not going to be able to just buy them outright. I'm going to have to buy you know the bits and pieces as the year goes by and then just collect it and then once I've got it all together then start going through the building. I imagine that's going to take a long time as well. Because um, again I don't, I don't have a sewing machine, this is all done by you know hand, needle and thread. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll, I'll try and get out as soon as possible with this haversack and put it through its paces. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.